We'll now give the floor to our panelists. And without further delay, I will now give the floor to Ms. Xiolang Fu, who was already presented by the president of this meeting, and I will give her the floor now. Madam Fu, I would like to ask you the following question. Based on your involvement and research into these uh, issues, could you say how globalization, new developments and technologies have re revolutionized the world of work and what consequences for SDG 8 and what inequalities between countries do you see in this issue? You have the floor. Um, thank you. Uh, it's a great privilege to be invited to be part of this very important forum. I will kick off the intensive uh, interactive uh, discussion by uh, presenting the big picture and respond to Mr. Uh, Moses' question. We are now living in a special time, a time that we are part of a new technological revolution, and a time that we also see significant disruption to the global trade system. And all these have profound implications for the economy and the society and the implementation of the SDGs. In particular, its principle, a major principle, leave no one behind. Firstly, these new technologies are two-edged swords. On the one hand, it provides great efficiency, connectivity, to the society, to the people, and to many of the firms, and also empower the people to be able to achieve something previously was impossible and they turned it possible. <coughs> However, on the other hand, this wave of technological revolution, in particular the development of artificial intelligence and the industrial robotics, have important implications on the future of work. There are already many uh, important, uh, valuable research on this uh, topic. Uh, about nearly 50% of the jobs in the industrialized countries, like in the US, will be affected. In the developing world, about two-thirds of the jobs will be affected, according to World Bank's uh, research. And the, my, also, my research also suggests that in the short run, we will see direct impact on the job market in the industrialized countries. In the developing countries where technology progress has not progressed to rolling out artificial intelligence, we will see indirect impact when the jobs are relocated back to the industrialized countries because of the reshoring of the manufacturing activities and the relocation of the production back to the uh, uh, developed countries. Secondly, and also more importantly, is the impact on income inequality. This wave of technological uh, revolution is biased towards capital and a small group of talents in the society. In the society. And therefore, income increase, the value added uh, increased, will go to the, those people, those rich people, those who have the uh, skills to benefit from artificial intelligence, the digital technology, etc. And those without will be left behind. And my research in Africa, in China, and Bangladesh uh, suggests that. Digital technology can help people, can bridge the digital divide. <coughs> However, only those uh, people who have the skills will benefit. Only those regions and countries have the infrastructure will be able to benefit. So the industrialized countries, developed countries <coughs> will be able to gain significantly from this digital revolution, while many of the developing countries, in particular Africa, may be left out. And the, my new book, which I call it Innovation Under the Radar, based on my seven years research in Africa, find 
people and firms in Africa, they are innovative, they are creative. However, they are innovating under the constraints, skill constraints, resources constraints, institutional constraints. Therefore, they are innovation. I call them under the radar innovation. Those innovation are learning based uh, innovation, uh, entrepreneurship driven and accumulative. So they're, they're not major technological breakthrough led innovation. And in this wave of technological uh, revolution, digital uh, technology, artificial intelligence, etc., cetera, um, and this type of innovation will not in enable the African countries to benefit as much as um, other industrialized countries. So income inequalities within the countries and the between the industrialized and the poor countries <coughs> will be increasing, will in be increasing. Thirdly, um, in recent years, we have also seen significant anti globalization uh, movement due to the false perception that globalization is the main causes uh, uh, um, uh, inducing the inequality. And this disruption to the global uh, trade system, the tariff war, has weakened the global trade system, uh, disrupted the global value chain, and damaged people's trust uh, in global division of labor and collaboration. So based on this, um, and uh, I have four policy recommendations. First <laughs> is develop digital skills through education, reforms of education, training, and also uh, lifelong learning um, provision. And, and the secondly, is building digital competencies through international partnerships in education, in investment, in infrastructure, and also policy recommendation. Those are related to SDG 4 and also SDG 7, one on education and the one on global partnership. And for, thirdly, promote responsible use of emerging technologies. Um, this is very important for decent jobs. So ethics, regulations, policies, and the governance should be coordinated across countries. Finally, is reinvigoration of the multilateral trade system. I would argue this includes not only coordination um, in terms of policies between countries, but also <coughs> between domestic policies and also international policies, between social policy, education policy, technology policy, and the trade policy and the, uh, and the investment policy. So that's my four policy recommendations. Thank you very much. And uh, now the floor is to Dr. Professor Fu for concluding. <clears throat> I have heard a lot of attention to youth and the women. As a teacher and a woman, I'm keen to see youth and women to benefit as much as others in the digital revolution. So thank you for all the uh, uh, sharing of good practices and also the points. I also second the point argument made by Gutmala. How is the most important question for us now? How? Actually, women and uh, the youth, especially the th youth, they can benefit a lot from the digital economy. However, they are constrained by the gaps. So how to address the gaps? I have two, three points. First, equip. Equip them with skilling, reskilling, not only digital skills, but also soft skills, in including entrepreneurship. Equip. Second, empowerment. Empower them by providing, developing platforms and providing opportunities. Third, enabling. Build up enabling environment for youth and women and also for business. Business grow and there are also, <laughs> there will be more uh, opportunities. So enabling an environment through regulations and the policies. That's all from me, thank you. <laughs>